Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another beautiful day of teaching with Teacher Dalam. So today we're going to look at some science. I hope you all have a piece of paper, like a blank piece of paper like this one to draw on because I want us to draw a picture later. But for now, okay. let's first have a look at what is our lesson going to be about. Now we are busy with the environment, life and the environment. So let's see. <clears throat> I think the last thing we talked about was, um, wait, let me see if I can record the video, okay. The uh, last thing we talked about was conservation of water. So we have the life and the environment. So shortly, what I want to talk to you about, while we have a little less time than I want, um, we quickly go through the water sources and their conservation. And then we'll look at some slides I prepared. Now we looked at this before, but it's important to go over it again. So we understand it better. So water is essential to humans, animals, and plants for drinking and cleaning. Water is also necessary for planting, raising animals, and provide a habitat for fish and other aquatic species that we have for to we have, that we use for food. Sorry, that we use for food. The industry uses water sources. Uh, uh, industries uses water for its production. Water is an energy source stored behind the dam. Energy from water can provide a lot of electricity uh, very quickly. So that's just some uses of water and what we use it for. We can use it for drinking, for cleaning, for raising animals, uh, for planting crops, for it's a habitat for living creatures in the ocean. We can use it to make electricity by using hydropower. So it's just giving us an idea. And if you have a country like Thailand, where you find a lot of beautiful mountains and waterfalls and places where water can run down, it also creates very beautiful tourist attractions for people from outside, foreigners like me, to go have a look at how beautiful the nature is in Thailand. So we do have problems with water. We do always have some problems. Oh, wait, just a moment. This thing is cutting off here. Why can't I read you? Oh, oh, a little bit smaller. Let's see if it works now. Um, Share screen again, sorry for that. I still can't see. Uh, problems with water supply and resources. Now water shortages can be due to little water available. This can be happened through deforestation. We are destroying the forests and the forests then create environments where water can wash away all the good soil. Now, seasonal floods like we are having currently in some places of Thailand, there is some floods where there's water everywhere on the road and in the streets everywhere. Um, that can happen in the rainy season, which we are in. So it's important for us to see how we can save more water or catch that water for later use. Uh, we can pollute the water and contaminate it by putting a lot of rubbish and the and our own cleaning materials and everything inside the water, very bad. And then we look at protecting our water resources. Now, there's a lot of ways that we can protect. Mostly is do not waste water by leaving taps open. Close your taps properly. Make sure that you do not throw any waste products or any untreated sewage into our water sources like dams and lakes. Arrange for a new water treatment system. Okay, that's a little bit for the government to do. They must arrange new water treatment. And we can also practice and campaign for water conservation. 
and protect and conserve the forest to help the environment and protect our water sources. Okay. So the, what is the importance of water? Four things we need for water. We need water to drink, so to live. We need water to grow plants for food. Ah, fish need water to live in. And we need water to wash ourselves, to clean. Mm, very good. The next one is what problems can we have with water? Water can be polluted and dirty and then we cannot drink it. We can also waste water by not closing taps properly or not sealing off places where water is leaking. The one that can cause other problems is rain can cause floodings. So it can cause a lot of damage to our infrastructure, our buildings, our electronics when we have floodings. Just think that if your house floods, how many things in your house will be damaged if the water is one meter high? A lot of things will get damaged. And then also problems of water is storage of water. We have a lot of ways of storing water, but we still lose a lot of water just through not having the correct ways or technological advancements to store the water correctly. I'm going a little bit fast because we lost some time and I want to get to our activity. Now the solutions for water. The one thing we can do is we can recycle water to clean the water so we can use it again. Water treatment plant. Better ways of saving water. Yes, we have to find better ways to save water. We can prepare for floodings by also making sure that we are people is aware when floods can happen and also maybe digging trenches and troughs where water can first flow into to give us time to take care of our things. And also solutions is to educate people on the importance of water. Because without water, we will never be able to live. Okay, so those are three a little short lesson on water. We have gone through it, but it's very important. I think for me, it's more important, maybe because I come from a country where there is not a lot of water. So we take a lot of, we take this water conservation in my country very serious. Where I, where I was born the, a couple of years back, there was zero, almost zero usable water left. So the people had to literally buy water from bottles because they couldn't drink tap water because there wasn't any water left. And that was due to a drought. It has since then rained and there is now more water, but yes, we can always have problems, even in Thailand. We have places that have droughts and that don't get water throughout the year like we get here in Petchabun. So it's always important to make sure that we are aware of how we can save and conserve our water. Okay. In the beginning of this section of this chapter i know it's been a long chapter and we only have one science class a week so it's difficult to go through all of it we talked about ecosystems we talked about different ecosystems can you guys remember so for our our example and our tale and our uh, little worksheet today what i want us to do is look at the four different ecosystems yes we have the desert we have the bushland we have a rainforest and we have the tundra now the desert and the tundra are very harsh environments to live in and also require very specific types of animals and creatures that live there the bushland and the rainforest looks like it's very easy to live there but that means there's a lot more living things 
So a lot more dangerous things as well. So we have the four different ones. What I want you to do is choose one of the ecosystems. Choose one of the ecosystems and draw an ecosystem. Now, let me just quickly explain. It's not a very difficult thing to do. Let me explain quickly how. So, my ecosystem. Number one, choose one of the four ecosystems. Okay. Number two, use the internet to find some pictures about the ecosystems, like the type of trees, type of animals, and those kind of things, type of terrain. And draw the e ecosystem and add five living things. So you have to find five living things. Your picture should have color. It has to be nice and colorful. You also have to write your name and your number on the paper and send it to the line group when you are finished. Now, I'd made an example for you. Please do not use my pictures. And please also think of other ones that I did not use. There are a lot. So an example is Palam's ecosystem. You can name your ecosystem. Now, clearly we can see this is in the desert. So I can draw the desert. I don't want to draw it because um, I, I can't draw very well, you know. If I have to show you how I draw the, let me show you a drawing. So let me draw the scorpion, then you will see what I mean. So we have one leg, we have two leg, we have three leg. Uh, we have a body. Uh, we have a tail. And we have claws. Do you see why I do not draw a picture? Because look how nice this picture looks. Look how bad this one looks. So teacher Pelham is not a good artist. I cannot draw very well. I also cannot sing very well, but I can dance. Yes, I can dance. So as you can see, I have five living things on my ecosystem. I have number one, I have a camel. Camel is very good for the desert. It can survive very harsh environments. It saves water in its humps here to use for later. Number two, we have our uh, El Scorpion. It's a, it's a creature that you can find in the desert, in the rainforest, in the tundra. You find that scorpion almost anywhere. It is very good at adapting to new environment and to live and survive. Then we have a cactus. Our first plant is the cactus. You can find a lot of cactuses in the Oh, uh, in the desert. My fourth picture is a picture of another animal. I'm not sure if you know this one. This one is the Gila monster. The Gila monster. They call him. If you want, you can Google it. Now, the Gila monster is a, it's actually quite nice, beautiful animal, but it's very dangerous. And it has a very toxic bite. So if it bites you, you will be in a lot of pain, a lot of pain, even more pain than the scorpion. So Gila monsters is beautiful to take pictures of, but do not come too close. And here is some camel thorn trees. Now the camel thorn tree is an acacia tree. What is Gila monster? A Gila monster. Let me show you another example. Uh, let me open the internet quickly here to show you the Gila monster. More pictures of it. It's a nice animal, but it lives in the desert. Uh, wait, wait. Stop share quickly. Gila monster. It's a desert living animal. Gila monster. I'll just show you some pictures of it. 
So it's a reptile. It is a reptile. The Gila monster is a reptile. So this is how the Gila monster looks. A little, it's a little reptile, and you can see by the picture here, it has a nice mouth. It doesn't look like it can bite you, but it will bite you. And if it bites you, it will hurt. A very beautiful animal. You die. You won't die. You won't die. You 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 will just be in a lot of pain. A lot of pain. But the Gila monster will never run at you to bite you. No. If you leave it alone, it will leave you alone with most of these animals. So now I have my picture with my, my ecosystem, Pelham's ecosystem. It's a desert and it has five pictures of desert creatures and plants. Now, you guys have to choose one of the four. Draw the ecosystem. So the rainforest is nice to draw because you have a lot of creativity. Same with the bushland. Same the tundra a little bit less and the desert a little bit less. So for the rainforest and bushland, if you choose them and draw big pictures and beautiful pictures, this one is 25 mark. This one is 25 mark. The desert, it's a little bit easier. We gave you 24 marks. Only one mark different, not a big deal, not a big deal. And the tundra, we haven't talked about the tundra in class yet. So I want us also to do a little bit of research. Um, try and use English when you do research. So the tundra will give us the most marks, 26, if we draw the tundra. Tundra. So once you've chosen your, your type of environment or ecosystem you want to draw, use the internet. You can use Google, you can use a lot of different sites on the internet to find out what animals live there, what plants live there, what trees live there. Then after that, I want you to Draw, draw your pictures, draw your pictures. Like I, I must draw a cactus, a scorpion, a camel, a gila monster, and a camel thorn tree. Now I want us to use an A4 paper, an A4 paper. Use only one type of ecosystem. We are not going to draw all of them. All of them are too many. Choose one. Draw five pictures. Remember to also give the picture a name. Look here, I didn't just draw a picture. I told you, this is a scorpion. This is a gila monster. This is a camel thorn tree. This is a cactus. This is a camel. So please also write the animals that or and the plants that you googled and you draw please write the name of that plant like i can i can draw trees like for instance we can go here and we can draw the rainforest but i do not know what are these trees in the rainforest i don't know what these trees are so you will have to tell me okay yes what they are when you search them so Again, one more time before you can start. Uh, how much time do we have? It's only 10 minutes left. So I'll give you 10 minutes time to do some research. And then you can do it for homework to draw the picture. Or you have time to draw it now. So choose one. Look at the internet for pictures about that one. Draw five pictures with color write your name and number send to line group who understand me put up your hand if you understand hey i am a rhyming person so tantan understands who else anyone else please raise your hand if you understand no one who 
you do not understand. Okay. One more time, and then I ask question again. So let me explain again. Remember, you must ask. Yes, I want you to explain again. Okay, okay. So, beginning of this chapter of life and the environment, we look at ecosystems. Ecosystem. So, I chose four different types. Desert, bushland, rainforest, tundra. There is four. Now you guys must draw a picture for me of one. So I chose the desert. You can choose the rainforest or tundra or bushland. Choose one to draw. Then you draw your environment first. You draw your environment, your ecosystem. Draw it. There you can also use the internet to find living things in that area and draw that as well. Your picture should look like mine, but obviously you are drawing. So you should have five drawn. Uh, 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 teacher, uh, choose five animals. Right. Animals and plants together, animals and plants. You have to choose five things that are living choose five and uh, and we have to draw that area too yes you draw that five picture plus you draw the ecosystem like the desert bushland rainforest or tundra now Andura. it's also important to use the internet let me show you how you can do it Give you some examples. I can. Okay. Give you an example. Um, share screen here. So here we have the Gila monster that we looked at. So I will say, okay, I choose the desert ecosystem. Okay. I will do it oh. now. Yes, we can start now. But remember, Rain yes, what rain forest. let's look rain. this is an example of how you can use the internet okay so now you look Jack, at the wow. and you're like wow look how beautiful that is oh here we see a picture which is very nice we have the rainforest we have a lot of animals here so we can choose these animals and draw them so you can say, okay, we have snake, I draw a snake. I can draw an eagle, I can draw a leopard or cheetah, I can draw a butterfly or a parrot. So you use the internet. You can also say, uh, okay, what living things live in the rain forest? So now we can look and see, oh, we have a tiger, we have monkeys, we have, I don't know what this thing is, but we can read and find out what do we call it. The ukapi. This is an ukapi. It looks like it looks like a zebra that got washed too many times. Look, look like a zebra. But there is the ukapi. So then you draw the ukapi and then you write the name on the you can do this for any any ecosystem. of the tundra, for example. So Google the tundra. Then you can hear someone that actually gave you some information about the tundra the type of animals and what so use the internet to find pictures okay yes i find now you guys can start with it whenever you feel like it we only have about six minutes left in the clock but but you have to make sure uh to finish this picture by what day what day do you think? Give me a day. 
When master picture is finished, come on, you guys give me a day. What day do you think you'll be finished? Tomorrow, Friday, Monday? I'll tell you, Monday. Monday, okay. I will also, I will also again inform you in the line group about it so that the people that are not here can also know. We have a lot of students here today, so let's see if we can do anything. Monday is the Twenty-six complete by twenty-six. Okay. Here's my example. Remember to write your name. I'll send. I'll send these two slides on the line group as well for those. Okay, so we have new information. I think Monday is a little bit too late. You have to send it to us by end of tomorrow. Thursday. Thursday is tomorrow, the 23rd. We have today and tomorrow to finish it. Okay. Day and tomorrow to finish it so that I can still have time to mark it for you. Okay, and I can mark it for you. I'll send the information also in the line group. So yeah, have fun and good luck. Um, I'll see you guys, our time is almost finished. So I'll send this on the line group now, and then I'll see you guys again at 11 o'clock for occupation, okay? Wait. <laughs> Asia, I uh, I not draw in the paper. Where are you drawing? In my phone. In your phone. If you're finished, send it on the line group. Let me see if it's okay. I think on the phone will not be that nice because you cannot draw that nicely with the phone. It's better to use paper and pencil. No, you are wrong. You think you think so, but remember, teacher is never wrong. If you think it's not good, I will show you how to do. Yeah, you can prove me wrong anytime. I also posted on the line. Oh, teacher, who already posted there? Okay, let me just let delete that message. Then okay. So now, yes, you have a couple of minutes, but I, our time is going to run out. So please draw your uh -huh. picture, send on the line group. Let me have a look. But I'll see you at 11 o'clock in 20 minutes for occupation. Okay. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you soon. Bye-bye. Have fun. Bye -bye. Enjoy the drawing. Enjoy the drawing. Have fun.